Hey guys, I'm Gamer Mate. Welcome back to a new video. So I'm here back inside Roblox Studio, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a very horror game. So what this is is going to be part one of how to make your very horror game series. And as you can see, I have this quick map here. So what this is is a spawn location where the players spawn. Over here, we have a classroom, which is just quickly built with some meshes and a chalkboard. And over here, we have some lockers, which I built. Over here, there's another classroom, which is pretty much the same as the other classroom. Then over here, we have a cafe, which has a few table and chairs in here, as well as this counter with a window and another chalkboard. Then over down here, we have a few more lockers. We have two more classrooms, like this. Then we have an office, once again, just a few more lockers, a desk and chair, and a sofa. Then across from here, we have a restroom, which has a mirror, a counter, and a few toilets. Then the last room what we have is a gym, which has a few benches, as well as a few basketball hoops. And then over here, you can see we have this door, which is going to be the exit of the school map. And if you look in the workspace, you can see I have a folder called School. There's a building folder, and this is just where all the building is. Also, this um, map isn't going to be a model or anything. But if you want to know how to make a map like this, I have a video on how to make a horror game map, which you can check out. So what we're going to be doing is making an objective and dialogue system. So the first thing is if we click start a GUI, click plus, add in a screen GUI, and then just rename this to dialogue. GUI. Inside of that, we can click plus, add in a script, and then just change the anchor point to 0 0.5, comma, 0 0.5, like that. Then change position to 0.5, comma, 0, comma, 0 0.5, comma, 0, like that. Now just move it up. To about here. Now we can resize it. So click size and then let's change it to 1 comma 0 comma 0 0.5 comma 0. I don't care that's actually a bit too big. So if we just change 0 0.5 to 0 0.15 like this and just move it up to about here. And that's going to be our frame. Then inside that frame, if you click it, click plus, and add in a text label. Then this time, if you click the text label, go to properties, go to size, and then change this to 1, 0, 1, 0. And now we can just change the background transparency to 1, as well as on the frame, like this. If you click the text label again, go back to properties. And then scroll down to text. We can just make sure text scaled is on. And now we can actually customise it with the text colour. And then a font. Then I'm going to go to text stroke transparency and change that to zero, like this. So here is our dialogue. Once we have that, we can click start a GUI, click plus. Add in a screen GUI, and then name this to Objective GUI. Inside that, we're going to be doing the same thing. So click for plus, add in the frame, change the anchor point to 0 0.5, comma 0 0.5. Then change the position and size again. Then once you've resized it and changed the position, we can click for frame, click plus, add in a text label. Then once again, Change the size to 1, comma 0, comma 1, comma 0. Go back to background transparency. Change that to 1 and then do the same on frame. Like this. And then once again, we can change the text and the font. Like this. So now, this is going to be our dialogue and this is going to be our objective. So now, if we click the frame on both of these, so you select them, go to properties, 
and make sure visible is unticked. So now you can see they're both invisible. And once we've done that, we can go to replicate storage, click plus, add in a folder. And then if we click that folder, go to properties, and then change the name of this to remote events, like this. If you click that folder, click plus, add in a remote event, and then change the name of the remote event to dialog event. Once again, do the same, add in a remote event. And then this time, we'll name it objective event, like that. And once you have both of these, we can add two more. So click remote event, name this to toggle dialog event. Do the same. So add in a remote event, then name it toggle objective event, like that. And then what we need to do inside the screen GUIs, click plus, add in a local script. And then rename that local script to toggle GUI, like that. Inside the script, we can remove print hello world. And then type in local remote event equals to game dot replicated storage dot remote events colon find first child to speech marks and then toggle dialogue event like that go down twice and then type in remote event dot on client event colon connect two brackets function two more brackets and then value and then go down and leave enter to appear with a bracket and then we can type in if value equals equals to true then script dot parent dot frame dot visible equals to true else script dot parent dot frame dot visible equals to false like that then once you have that we can just close our script copy it paste it inside the objective open it now what we need to do is change toggle dialog event to toggle objective event like that and then it should work the same for the objective now we've closed that off, close off the GUIs and your remote events. And now you should see a folder called Start Player. If you open that, click Start Character Scripts, click plus, add in a local script, and then we can name that local script to dialogue script. And inside that, we can type in local player equals to game dot players dot local player then local remote event equals to game dot replicate storage dot remote events colon find first child speech marks and then dialogue event go down Type in local frame equals to player dot player GUI colon wait for child two brackets and speech marks and then type in dialogue GUI like that then outside brackets do dot frame like that then if you go down and type in local function animate text two brackets and then content then go down and it end should appear and then if you do for i equals to one comma string dot len two brackets and then content outside of brackets and then do go down and now we can type in 
is frame, colon, wait for child, two brackets in speech marks, and then text label, dot text, equals to string, dot sub, brackets, and then content, and then comma, then one, then comma, and then I, like that. Then if we go down and type in wait, 0 0.05, like that. And then underneath these two ends, we can go down and then type in remote event, dot on client event, colon, connect, two brackets, function, two more brackets, and then content, go down, and now what we can do is frame dot visible equals to true, and then go down, frame, colon, wait for child, brackets and speech marks, text label, and then dot text equals to and then two empty speech marks like that. Go down and then type in animate text brackets and then content like that. Then once you have this, what we can do is close it off. Click start a character script, click plus, add in a local script, name this local script to objective script, and inside that we can just copy paste the same dialogue like this. Copy it, paste, and now what we need to do is change this to objective event. And the last thing we need to change is this GUI to objective GUI. And then everything else should be okay. If close it off. And before we test it, we actually need to add in another script. So if we just close these off, click serve script service, click plus, add in a script. And this is going to be our main script for the entire game. So if we click script, click name, then rename this to main game script, like that. So if you remove print hello world and type in local dialogue event, equals to game dot replicate storage dot remote events colon find first child brackets and speech marks and then dialogue event go down and then we can do the same so local objective event equals to game dot replicate storage dot remote events colon find first child brackets speech marks of an objective event go down twice and then if do local function main game two brackets go down a new end should appear and then underneath this end we can just go down type in wait and then let's wait 10 seconds, go down, and then main game, two brackets. And what this does is after 10 seconds of being in the game, then it should start the actual main game, which is this function. So if we actually go up and type in local toggle dialog event equals to game dot replicated storage dot remote events colon find first child brackets and speech marks then this time we'll do toggle oops toggle dialogue event then let's do the same for the toggle objective event so local toggle objective event equals to game dot replicate storage dot remote events colon find first child brackets and speech marks then toggle objective event like that so in between these two lines which is the function and the end 
So in between them, we can do toggle. Oops, toggle, dialogue, event, colon, fire or client, two brackets, and then true. So what this does, it toggles the dialogue to visible. So if you set this to false, then that means it'll turn invisible. So let's just keep this to true. Okay, so this will make the dialogue appear. But the dialogue just says text for now. So we're going to be changing that. So if we do dialogue, event, colon, fire, or clients, two brackets, then two speech marks. Then let's type in what dialogue we want. So this is going to be our story. So let's type in something like, I need to find the office, like that. I'll just add in a note, dialogue, talking, like that. And then underneath that, we can add in a wait. And this wait is how long the dialogue is on the screen for. So let's wait about four seconds, go down. And then let's actually toggle the dialogue off. So toggle, oops, I can't spell. Toggle dialogue event, colon fire or clients, brackets, and then false. Once again, I'll add in a note. Then this time we'll do toggle objective event, colon fire or clients, two brackets. Then this time we'll set this to true. Once again, I'll add in a note. Then we could do objective event, colon, fire or clients, two brackets, speech marks, and then this will be the text of the objective. So this can be find the office, like that. And let's see if this works. So close off the script, click play. Then once we load in, we should see the dialogue work. Okay, so once we load it in, you can see I need to find the office. And then down here, find the office, like that. And then the dialogue untoggles, so it goes invisible. And then this appears. And you can see the text also animates. And that should be it for part one of this new series on how to make your very own horror game. If this video helped, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe down below. In the description, you can check our Roblox group and Discord server. And I'll see you later. Bye!